Hello everyone. Well, for the last couple of years have been so tough for each one of us, but today we wanted to discuss about trauma. You know, we wanted to open this topic up and how do you transform yourself if someone has gone through trauma? To talk about this topic, we have Dr. Rui. Dr. Rui is actually a trained naturopathic physician, but she focused, she's focusing on mental health and helping a lot of people transform themselves or come overcome trauma. Thank you so much, Dr. Rui, for joining me. Thank you for having me here. I'm so excited. Today, go ahead, please. Sorry, I'm excited to talk about this topic. So someone who has gone through trauma, um, what, are, what is the first step? I mean, in the sense you don't even know where to get started, right? So we want to just in this 10 minute session today, give people hope and also give them some kind of a simple framework that they can at least follow. Yeah, so the first thing is always safety. Safety first, making sure that they're safe, um, making sure that they're also getting the immediate care that they need. So medically speaking, they're, they've been seen by a doctor. And also it's really important that they've been seen by a healthcare provider, like a mental health um, provider, so that they can start to put in the appropriate resources for them. Um, the thing that we want to avoid is that it becomes kind of a post-traumatic and chronic type of stress. So initially, when my client comes to me and she's experienced some kind of trauma, it's like all hands on deck. Got to make sure that we're putting the right people in so that she can get that initial support. Okay? And then the next thing is really stabilization. Now, a lot of the times people experience so much with what we call sympathetic overwhelm. And it's really the body is in fight or flight. And sometimes it may look like they're not sleeping. It may look like their heart's racing, they're sweating. And really that's still from the nervous system not fully integrating that trauma. So in the first month, sometimes they might, there might be medications that need to be put on board. There might be medications that can help turn down the fight or flight response. There might be medications that they need to help them sleep. There might be natural anxiolytics that we can use to try to bring down that anxiety. And also, we can also turn to nutrition, which can also help to trigger them into a more relaxed, recover state. Okay, so safety in the body is really important, especially that first month. Okay, so now uh, uh, you talk about the safety part and then the nutrition part. All this happens within the first month or you, do you wait for, uh, you know, think people to stabilize first? So that's part of the stabilization process. So if they've acutely, if they've really just experienced it, they need to get safe and they need to get stabilized within that first month and having all the resources on board for that. Okay, so talk to us um, uh, that uh, type of nutrition that you are going to recommend on a very high level, uh, what you're going to take out, what you're going to replenish, and then when you're talking about the safety, is it like counseling, you know, that, that we are doing, what is the overall framework, right? Yeah, so safety in the body first. So literally a lot of it is just helping them to calm down the sympathetic state. So there are certain natural supplements that we can do with that. Um, for example, magnesium helps to turn on rest, helps, helps their body to recover. Um, there's also things like ashwagandha, which can be helpful for sleep. It can also help to turn down again. A lot of the cortisol, which can be released after, after a traumatic event. Um, and then after that, once they've been stabilized and their body is safe, right? Because if someone is feeling their heart racing, if they're sweating, it's really hard to do counseling on that person or hard for them to do any kind of trauma work because their body is just not stabilized yet. So we always address the body first. And then once, once you're starting to see that they're not having this strong sympathetic fight or flight response, and we can start to do a little bit more trauma work or trauma integration, but they have to be grounded and stable in their body first. After that, we have to develop the skill of safety in their mind, which is essentially being able to soothe themselves if they're having that overwhelming sympathetic response. So some of the things I teach is mindfulness, um, other things are just a quick, simple grounding technique called the five, four, three, two, one which is actually looking and scanning your environment 
for five things that you can see, four things that you can hear, three things that you can physically touch, two things that you might be able to smell, and one thing that you can taste. And essentially what you're doing is you're building grounding into that present moment instead of having the mind go to like the past or maybe to the future. And I also do a lot of somatic things because the, the brain can go into overwhelm very quickly for somebody who's experienced trauma. So things that get them back into their body. So for example, just even like tapping, that pressure of hugging yourself and doing a gentle tapping that gets people back into their body, back into the present situation. And so first safety, sta try to stabilize them. It, that may even require some medications if necessary. And then safety in the body. So one of the things I also teach my clients initially is that their blood sugar is usually going haywire if they've experienced trauma. So those ups and downs in their body that can actually reignite some of the trauma responses. So just even stabilizing their blood sugar with protein, making sure they're having good micronutrients, just that alone can help shift their body into recovery, okay? And so safety in the mind, mindfulness, um, some of the tapping techniques that we do, and also yoga, yoga and breath work, I've found to be really important too, to help regulate that nervous system. Okay, so it's all, uh, now the thing is someone who's gone through trauma, it could be emotional trauma, childhood trauma, or someone who's gone to a war, and then they, you know, this multiple type of traumas, and that's not what we're discussing right now. So what the what I want to get to is that, is does that become like a lifestyle for them? In other words, like, you know, the things that you talked about, Ashwagandha, some talking of supplements, changing the nutrition, doing the mindfulness, then the yoga asanas, and then some of the other things you talked about, tapping, right? So these five things, do they have to use that after they're recovered a little bit on a continuous basis or they stop it and then the trauma would come? So in a lot of, so in PTSD, which is essentially, it's associated with an event and there's complex trauma, which you were um, talking about, which is essentially like childhood abuse. Um, that one's a little bit more complicated to address because there's developmental issues that can occur. There might not be a healthy, um, healthy ego. So we have to kind of build that up. With PTSD, it's both of them will require kind of certain lifestyle changes like mindfulness, um, primarily because the brain can go, again, past or the future. Um, and then with nutrition, oftentimes it, it can take months for the nervous system to just even start to balance out. So it ends up becoming more of a lifestyle and a habit, um, primarily because healing the nervous system can take some time. Sure. Um, well, this is a quick 10 minute session that we wanted to bring and give hope to people who have been traumatized and they feel that they have to be on medication. Now, one of the things that I, I, I do want to touch on is you said sometimes the first step is safety, even if they have to be given medication. In your experience, do they have to be on medication the rest of their lives? Or if they start incorporating these lifestyle modifications, can they get off the meds or not? Uh, so if they start incorporating these lifestyle changes and also some of the supplementation, yeah, they can totally get off of medications. Um, they, it does involve a lot of the counseling and kind of integration of the trauma so that it's not having them get re-triggered. So that's an important aspect as well. Okay. Well, this is all we wanted to bring today, this evening. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Rui, for joining thank me. You. And, and giving hope to all the people out there who maybe have gone through some kind of trauma. I know all of us have had some type of trauma with COVID. So it's not that you are alone. All the whole world is with you. You might have had more, a little bit more degree of trauma than someone else. And there is hope. That's what we're bringing. Anything else you like to uh, add before I wrap up the session today? Um, no, I think we've, we've covered a lot, but it's about safety first. And really, I want to I want to emphasize that we have to get the body safe before we start to kind of
do mindfulness, all those other things, because the body needs to be regulated first. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Have a great evening, everyone, and keep supporting us. Thank you, and bye-bye.